the only place where a child buys hundred chocolates and no eyebrows are raised. The only place where a seller can sell all his 150 watermelons at a time. The only place where landlords can buy acres of lands and no income tax rights are done. Any guesses? Yes, the place is numerical problems. Greetings to everyone present here. This is Diketa Rakeshwar of Class 10 KRM Public School India here to present my TED talk on the champion in me. I know as soon as I say numericals, I could see the smiles disappearing from your face. Don't panic, you'll start loving it as soon as I complete my talk. In the class, if the teacher asks any question, there will be a flurry of activity to avoid the question luckily. But now, in the modern era of online classes, we have the luxury to easily mute the class and have pleasant daydreams. Once William Paul Thurston has said, numerical ability is not about numbers, equations, computations or algorithms, it is about understanding it. Once the max exams are around the corner, we start having nightmares. What can we do to face this deadly fear? The answer is already given by Paul Thurston. The key lies in understanding it. By understanding your concepts, you can easily crack the exam. Numerical ability is all about becoming a creative thinker and not a calculator. All right, let me tell you about a grave situation faced by myself. As soon as the exams are over, the papers are validated and marks are branded, everybody is suddenly interested in knowing my max paper marks. Though I have got good grades in all the papers, they don't show much enthusiasm on it. All they care about is max marks. And now I should start my cock and bull story of why I am not living up to their standards. At the time, I felt when they would stop their lecture. When they asked what is the reason for taking low marks in exams, you would start to give some reasons. Because we all know very well our brain is a search engine of reasons and I do have some tricks up my sleeves. Hope you all agree with this point. But the end is always the same. I get advice and my tricks to canvases always got failure. Then I thought, instead of telling reasons, why can't we motivate ourselves in solving math problems? So I motivated myself by seeing a hen. If I tell you hen, what comes to your mind? Maybe a chicken with yummy barbecue sauce or chicken biryani? Well, unfortunately, we are here on a Max Mania roller coaster ride. Actually, hen could do Max. Hard to believe it, right? Yes, it has been proved that chicken could do basic calculation as the objects in front of them are moved to and fro. When I went to my friend's house, who is taming hen, he did this experiment in front of me. He took two opaque screens and had one ball in one screen and two balls in another screen. The hen correctly approached the screen, which is having higher number of balls. Now, he moved one ball from screen two to screen one, so it will add up one plus one equal to two balls in screen one, and 2 minus 1 equal to 1 ball in screen 2 accordingly and correctly approaches the screen 1. If this sounds complicated for us, then think about the bird in the question is just 3 days old. But research tells that infant chickens correctly approach the screen which is having higher number of balls nearly 80% of the time. Imagine if a 3 day old bird could do calculation then why can't we? So I motivated myself by seeing this hen, which made my mathematical skills somewhat easier. When I was in a primary, I didn't like number crunching at all. I felt it was so boring. My mother 
like a goddess, decided it is the time to take an upper hand in my learning and she thrust me in Apaka's classes. I felt as cat got my tongue and left without choice. I attended those courses which gave me some hands-on experience in my mathematical skills which gained me confidence. I know I am not an ideal person but my tip to all of you is Arithmetic is easy when you start it with interest. When I ask my friends why they are having difficulty in maths, almost everyone answers the same. Nervousness. When we do any mistakes in sums, immediately we get tensed. To overcome this, what can we do? According to the NAEP report card of mathematics, higher average scores of 8th graders are more confident in their ability to do mathematics related tasks. 8th grade students answer the questions about their confidence in performing a variety of numeracy related tasks such as explaining to a classmate how they solved a problem or using a correct mathematical words and symbols when showing their work. Students' responses to these questions can be combined to create an index which focuses on the confidence of the students in performing the mathematics related task. In 2019, 51% of the students said to have low to moderate level of confidence in the mathematics knowledge and skills. Grade 8 students who reported to have higher level of confidence has higher score on average than those who have lower level of confidence. From this survey, we have learned that we should enjoy solving sums rather than being overcautious. Now, let us look into the case of few people who have devoted their life in improving the quality of mathematics. Aryabhata. He worked on the place value system using letters to signify the numbers and stating qualities. He discovered the position of the nine planets and stated that these revolves around the sun. He also stated the number of days for a year, that is 365. Archimedes. He also spent his entire life trying to figure out a mathematical formula which is connected to physics. He came up with the deductions that paved way for many inventions. Entering a bathtub filled with water demonstrates Archimedes' principle an equal amount of water is displaced as the weight of the occupant. He also spent his entire life trying to figure out a mathematical formula which is connected to physics. He came up with the deductions that paved way for many inventions. Entering a bathtub filled with water demonstrates Archimedes' principle an equal amount of water is displaced as the weight of the occupant. Last but not the least, Srinivasa Ramanujan. He is a well-known and celebrated Indian mathematician. His contributions to the field include Hardy Ramanujam Littlewood Circle Method to the Number Theory, Roger Ramanujam's Identity in the Partition of Numbers, and Work on Algebra of Inequality. These are some famous personalities who have made maths as their life. They connected the objects which they liked to the mathematics and made new inventions. They are the true inspirations for me to create this idea. By seeing all of your reactions, I can deduce that you are experiencing the sensation as you are viewing a foreign movie without any subtitles. Now, for a little pressure, I am going to tell you a formula. Don't panic again, not about any of the known theorems, rather a formula that I have introduced. Emotional equation. Do you think it is impossible to rationalize an emotion with a simple equation? You may be certainly incorrect because here's an example. According to the Chip Conley, suffering is a constant because we all suffer to some degree. Meaning, on the other hand, is a variable since we can add or remove the sense of meaning to just about anything. So we can say this pi equal to suffering minus meaning. When you increase the sense of meaning, your suffering may not change but your sense of this pi lessens. Now, we can take an another example too. Most of the people say they want everything to be silent. They think it gives them happiness. But this is not true. I am claiming that I can prove it with an equation. Silence with happiness brings us ecstasy. 
So we can say silence plus happy equal to ecstasy and silence minus happy equal to misery. When we add these both equations, we get two silence equal to ecstasy plus misery. When we transpose the two from LHS to RHS, we get silence equal to half ecstasy plus half misery. See, we have figured out the life's purposes with these two basic equations. I took a survey to students to get their view about mathematics. Let's see the results now. 82% of the students said that they like mathematics, but 18 of them said no. When I asked what is the reason for that, almost everyone answered the same. It is very difficult to remember the formulas. Formulas become drastically easy when it is compared with your emotions. For example, we all are familiar with the Pythagoras theorem, which is a square plus b square equal to c square. Let's substitute it with success, accepting failure, and growth. So we can say success square plus accepting failure square equal to growth square. We can also write a meaning for this equation to remember this easily. Success will come in our lives, but we may also experience failures. Failures are simply feedback. Accept them and they will make your life more to grow. See, isn't it sound thrilling? Just substitute the things you like and ta-da, you got your own substitute theorem. Let me name this theorem as Taurus theorem since I have invented this. Now let's see the answer for the next question in my survey. 41% of the students said that they like statistics in the mathematics. So can we connect the graph with our emotions? Why not? We can draw our own MO graph. For this, firstly we need to draw our own emotion tabulation. In this, we just need to write the emotion which you are experiencing at a certain point of time, say joy at 6. Like this, you need to track your emotions for an entire day. Here is my emotion tabulation where I tracked my emotion. And now we can draw the emo graph for this. We just need to mark the coordinate point of our emotion which is in our tabular column, say 6 joy, 7 anticipation. We just need to join all the coordinate points marked and our emotion line is also ready. If the line is in more in your downwards, you are in a happy mode. If it is more in your upwards, you are in a misery. This emo graph helps us to track our own emotion and able to see how happy and how sad we are. Now, I came up with some ideas where I connected my favorite things with the mathematics. Let's say it one by one. My favorite pastime is playing chess with my dad and I usually associate maths with the chess because serious thinking and analysis of a position is crucial in both of them. Geometry rather than mathematics is the most important aspect in the chess. A coordinate system is used to determine which piece is best to sacrifice at a certain point of time. Files, roots and diagonals are among the geometric ideas introduced. The end game, the concluding stage of the chess game is a very crucial. Even in the Middle Ages, good chess players used basic geometric formulas to predict the outcome with only a glimpse at the chessboard. For example, we can take the law of square where a white player possesses a king and a pawn versus a only black king. Here, the square is used to determine whether the black king can stop the passed pawn or the pawn will promote. Chess masters can compute the game results by drawing a basic mental square on the chessboard rather than calculating move by move. The rule of bar is also similar to this. Two diagonals are drawn. If they meet, the game will won by white. If they don't, the game will come to an halt. Alright, let's play a game now. Shall we? I came up with the formulas to calculate your emotions. Most of the people express their emotions in public. Some express their affection to others, while others express their anger. Do you want to give it a shot? So, here how it works. Laughter plus love into wonder plus courage minus compassion plus fear into disgust plus anger divided by the time taken. For a given length of time, say 24 hours, you must keep on tracking how many times you laugh, 
exhibit love, show courage, be furious, wonder, disgusted. It's as simple as substituting the values and calculating. If your answer is more than five, you are emotionally healthy. If it is less than five, you must control your rage. Let me name the essay unit as T since I have invented this formula too. Once there lived a determined rabbit, if it steps into a task, it will not come back. And this determined rabbit is stuck in a well of 30 meter depth. It climbs 5 meter and again comes 3 meter down in one hour. So, how much time it takes to come to the level of ground? Any answers? According to the arithmetic, we can say it takes 14 hours to escape. But I am having an outlier answer. I am saying that it takes only 6 hours. Do you know the reason? This is because the rabbit in the question is said to be determined. So, there is no need to come down again. When you see this question in this banner, the rabbit can escape in just 6 hours. Please don't solve in this sum in this way in your exams because this is just an example that you should not step back. I, now I came up with a crazy idea to remember the integers. Most of them has a difficulty in integers that too in the signs of numbers. By this, I lost my marks most of the time. So I thought, can we find a new way to remember these signs? We all have heard this saying that our enemy's enemy's friend. So I thought, can we connect this saying with the integers? Then I substituted the plus sign with the friend and minus sign with the enemy. So we can say plus into plus equal to plus as friend's friend is friend. Minus into minus equal to plus as enemy's enemy is friend. Minus into plus equal to minus as enemy's friend is enemy. And plus into minus equal to minus as friend's enemy is enemy. See, isn't it sounds interesting? By this, we can go into our next interesting topic too. Tossing a coin. If I say you this, what comes to your mind? Maybe a cricket match? But in the case of mathematics, we use in the probability. And I use this probability in taking a decision. There are two outcomes for a decision. One will be our favorite thing and another will be a thing forced by others. But only one outcome will come after tossing the coin. So we can say there are 50-50 chance for both the outcomes. But when we toss the coin, our heart will say to something to come as an outcome. Just follow that to make a right decision. And also decision making is a skill because there are both positive and negative outcomes. You just need to learn the trick how to flip a coin to make a positive outcome. Always keep this quote in mind, mathematics may not teach us how to add love or subtract hate, but it does give everyone hope that there is a solution to every situation. What will you say when he ask you the entire form of max? I am sure when I ask this question in first, you will say something like mental attack to healthy students. But to wrap up my talk, I would like to say an abbreviation that is mistakes allows thinking to happen. So learn it, use it, make beautiful things and solve big problems, make the world a better place with maths. Thank you very much.